Hi, I've got something very new and special that I'd really like for you to see. It's a video about satisfying your listeners called Doing Whatever It Takes. Now you're probably wondering, what does Michael Jordan know about WWPI Internet Radio? Well, let me tell you, when I step onto the basketball court, those 18,000 screaming people aren't just fans. They are my potential listeners. They want to see more than just a basketball game. They expect to see a show. No matter what kind of day I've had, when I'm streaming, my listeners expect behind-the-back passes, long three-pointers, and spectacular internet content. The video you're about to see will show you how to properly use the equipment in the WWPI radio room. And it will take you behind the scenes to show you how your video is actually made. So let's see how to create a successful internet radio stream. Hello. Unfortunately Michael Jordan wasn't available for the rest of this video, so I'll have to do. Yes I'm a robot. Let's continue. When you first enter the radio room, located in room 329 on the third floor of the campus center here at WPI, you'll notice all sorts of equipment around the room. On the left counter is where Robo DJ resides. This computer should not be touched, as it plays all of the off-air music for our radio station. We will discuss this computer later on. Direct your attention now to the dual monitors at the far wall, this is your studio computer. The tower for the computer is located at your feet, so be careful you do not accidentally kick it. Take a seat in one of our many chairs, and enter your WPI credentials like you would any computer on campus. If it is your first time logging in on this computer, it may take a moment. On your desktop you will find a program called Open Broadcaster Software, OBS for short. This is how we stream to our website. For more information on how to use OBS, watch the recorded OBS seminar on our website. Once OBS is set up, it is time to stream. Here in the radio room we have a plethora of audio inputs, such as an aux cord, two professional microphones, a CD player, a tape deck, a vinyl record player, and other plug-in inputs to suit your individual needs. All audio sources are run through our large mix board to the right of the studio computer. But how do these all work? First, let's look at the mix board. When it comes to playing audio for your listeners and for yourself while in the studio, three things must happen. First, the master audio knob, located on the right of the mix board, must be turned on to about half, so you can hear your own audio playback. In case you forget, it has a white printed label. When it is turned up, don't worry about audio feedback, the microphones will not provide any feedback loops. Second, the desired input channel must be unmuted. The mute and unmute buttons are located above the desired channel sliders. Once the mute feature is off, the red light will turn off as well. Finally, slide the corresponding sliders up to the desired level. Typically, about 75% volume is perfect. Keep in mind that this is the audio levels your listeners will be hearing, so watch the audio levels in OBS and make sure they don't peak in or above the red. Also note that a few of the channels are joined together. These few audio channels provide both a left and a right audio track allowing for pure stereo audio. Be sure, if you are using these dual channels, to unmute both the left and the right channels via the mute buttons. After using the desired input, be sure to mute them again with the mute buttons. However, if you like, you can leave the sliders where they are for the duration of your show to allow for easy input switching. Now let's look at each individual piece of equipment. The aux cord, as many of you are sure to be familiar with, is straightforward. Plug into your laptop or phone, and play directly from your device. Keep the audio levels on the device at around 50%, and compensate with the sliders. This way your audio is sure to be good quality. The left and right studio microphones are also fairly simple. Before every show, unmute each microphone and find the perfect audio level. You should never have to shout into the microphone, so be sure to compensate with the sliders once more. Here at WWPI, we have a studio phone. Our phone number can be found at the bottom of our website or on the phone's dock. When a caller calls in, you can answer by picking up the phone. When you do so, the conversation is not yet on the radio stream. Use this time to vet the caller to ensure nothing bad happens on air. When you're ready to push the caller on air, press the headphones button located on the phone's dock. You can now place down the phone and continue talking to the caller through the studio microphone, and their audio will play on air and through the studio speakers. When you're done, simply hang up the phone. Moving on, the tape deck is a great way to play all those old hits. It is located in the bottom of the rack to the left of the studio computer, along with the CD player. 
All units in this rack should always be on. Currently tape deck 2, the rightmost player, is better to use. To open the deck, press the eject button. When placing a tape inside, ensure the fat end with the tape film is down. Close the hatch, and hit play. This tape deck supports playing in both directions, hence the left and right play buttons. It may take a few seconds to play, otherwise try playing in the other direction, try flipping the tape, or try rewinding to the beginning. When done please put back the tape to the proper container or box where it came from. Next is the CD player located above the tape deck. Like the tape deck, there are two decks, the left and the right. Both work perfectly. To open the CD tray, press either of the open slash close buttons and insert your disc. Close the tray, and direct your attention to the unit above. To the left of each deck you'll notice a large white knob. This knob is unimportant and may mess up your audio playback. Try not to touch the large knob. To the right of the screen is a small white knob. This knob is important and helps you select your track on the CD. Once ready, you can either cue the song with the cue button or play it with the play button. Once the song is complete, make sure the CD is not still playing by pausing or cueing the next track. When done, please empty the CD trays and return any and all CDs to their proper cases and back to their proper places. The record player, located to the right of the mix board, can play standard LPs and 45s. To play music from the record player, open the protective case and place the record on the metal rod. To move the needle, first undo its safety clip. Flip up the cue lever, bring the needle above the outside perimeter of the record, and lower the cue lever. For playing LPs, ensure the left switch is on 33. For playing 45s, ensure the switch is on 45. Plastic 45 inserts are provided, which will keep the 45 record centered on the turntable. Simply snap them inside the center hole, then lower the 45 onto the metal rod. The trim knob below is for slight speed changes to the record, in case you notice the record lagging or speeding ahead. Once completed, again return the record back to its home, latch the needle arm, and lower the protective casing. Underneath the counter under the mix board, there are numerous quarter-inch jack inputs and XLR inputs. If you have any guitars, electric drums, microphones, electric violins, or other various instruments feel free to plug them in here for your listeners to hear. This setup is perfect for if you have a band or ensemble which wishes to play on air. All plugs are labeled to their corresponding channels on the mix board. The last piece of equipment we need to talk about is the Robo DJ computer. The computer monitor has a speaker located underneath the screen. This may or may not be on when you first walk in the room. Do not be alarmed, the music is on 24-7 even during show times, even though it may not currently be streaming. To turn the sound off while you're in the room, there is a knob on the right of the speaker. Simply turn it until the blue light in the middle of the speaker turns off. Robo DJ is designed to play 24 hours a day, 7 days a week when there are no live human shows streaming. It is important that you stick to your allotted time per week as per the schedule. Robo DJ will turn off its stream 5 minutes before your show, and turn back on 5 minutes after your show. Robo DJ cannot interrupt your stream, but that also means you cannot interrupt Robo DJ's stream. If for whatever reason there is an error with Robo DJ, turn off Robo DJ's computer via the large power button on top of the computer tower located to the right of the mini fridge, and notify the executive board as soon as possible. That also goes for any other technical issues faced in the radio room. Do not be afraid to reach out to the execs. Congratulations! You have now completed your first radio show. Before leaving, however, there are a few things to take care of. The three steps used at the beginning must now be undone. All sliders must be in the downwards position, all channels must be muted, and the master volume knob must be turned down fully. Also, push the microphone arms back against the wall, and log out of the studio computer. When leaving, turn off the lights. I hope you learned a lot about our glorious radio room, and of course if you have any questions do not be afraid to reach out to the execs. And remember, WWPI Campus Radio. I want you to give yourself a chance. A chance to find out all the wonderful things you really can be. And so do I.